Hi, it's Dwyer. Wednesday, November the 7th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Let's talk, let's do some homework here. Let's look at a fight involving Tyson Fury in trying to handicap his upcoming bout against Deontay Wilder. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Tyson Fury was being interviewed. Apparently, it was on the Joe Rogan show. Joe's the man. That's the show where Elon Musk uh, famously took a recreational uh, 420 break. Well, I'll just say this. On the show, Tyson Fury admitted to the host, apparently, that his toughest fight to date in his mind was his bout against Steve Cunningham. So, in my favorites folder here on YouTube, I have the highlights from that fight, right? That fight's a major fight for anyone who is thinking about gambling on the Tyson Fury-Deontay Wilder fight. Now, first, my bias. I feel that Fury is just the better fighter. I'm expecting Fury to put on a show. I'm expecting Fury to win by a wide margin, right? The play I like is Fury to win. I'll hedge the play with Wilder by KO, right? Fury right now is a plus 140. Gives you a little bit of room to fool around with the hedge, how, you, how much you want to put on either side, whether you want a hedge that makes a profit if it hits or whether you just want a hedge that cuts losses. But let's get back to the Cunningham fight. In the Cunningham fight, in the second round, early, while the guys both have a full tank of gas, Steve Cunningham lands a right hand. Right? It's a high right hand on Tyson Fury, and Fury goes down. Right? Fury's hurt on the canvas. The look on his face shows that he's dazed and confused, right? Had Cunningham landed the punch just a little bit more flush, and understand, Cunningham was not a big puncher. He's not close. He's not in the county of puncher that Deontay Wilder is. Had Wilder, had Cunningham just landed that punch a little bit more flush, you get the feeling that Fury could have been counted out. Well, more importantly, when Fury gets off the canvas and tries to go to work, right? Fury's clearly trying to be alpha in the fight, right? At one point, he's yelling at Cunningham. After Fury gets off the canvas, Fury gets hit again with the right hand. In other words, the defensive adjustments didn't stop him from getting hit with that right hand again. Now that's important because if he's lucky enough to survive one good Deontay Wilder right hand, would he be lucky enough to survive two? Right? I'm sure the Wilder people have framed the video of the Cunningham fight. They've studied it. I'm sure Deontay Wilder considers it to be a blueprint on how to beat Tyson Fury. A guy dropping Fury off a right hand. A guy able to land it again. Here's why I'm not worried about it. You'll notice in the Cunningham fight that first right hand lands because the fight turns into a bit of a brawl, right? It's not a well-behaved fight. The guys aren't standing looking at each other, and then Tyson Fury gets hit with the right hand and goes down. That's not the way the fight is. Rather, they're up close. You'll notice Cunningham is bent at the waist. He's not as upright or as back 
as I expect Deontay Wilder to be. In other words, Cunningham hits him with an overhand right. But to me, the angles are different than the angles used by Deontay Wilder to hit you with his right hand. Even when the Luis Ortiz fight gets a little bit rough and tumble, Deontay Wilder is a guy who typically fights tall. He's not bent at the waist and throwing these looping Ken Norton type shots like Cunningham is. Right? So, I'll agree. Fury clearly has been hurt in the past. He's been knocked down in the past by an overhand right. Right? I'll agree with that. I'll agree he couldn't avoid the punch, at least for a round and a half after that punch landed. Right? The two guys come in again, and Cunningham again you know, goes low, throws the punch, and lands. And Fury stood up. In other words, the punch has an effect. I'll also agree that Cunningham, great as a cruiser, was out of his division as a heavy. Deontay Wilder hits hard by heavyweight standards. One of the best punches in boxing. I'd say pound for pound, but the boxing hardcore always remind me when I mention a heavyweight as a pound-for-pound pound puncher that the pound-for-pound pound designation was intended for non-heavyweights. Okay, fair enough. But I'm expecting Wilder to be upright, not to bend forward. I don't think Wilder is going to Encourage the kind of brawl, the kind of free-for-all that Cunningham was willing to engage in with Fury. Right? Cunningham's coming forward, the guys are throwing and stuff. The way this fight ends is you'll notice that Fury starts walking down Cunningham, has his hands up and is walking inside. Now let me just say this. There's a spatial dynamic, in my opinion, to Wilder's right hand. Wilder throws it well from distance. Not so well when you get up close to him. Right? Think about the Arthur Spielka fight. Spielka looks great, in my opinion, for several rounds. Great. It's when Spielka's outside and Wilder has a chance to do is wind up and deliver it from outside. That he's able to knock Spielka out. Same thing remains to Vern, the rematch. Same thing. Right? It's when Wilder's outside and he's able to throw from long range that Wilder's able to stop you. Cunningham's a little bit different. Cunningham is closer has his head down, you can tell that Fury is reading cues. You can tell Fury doesn't even see the punch. Fury is kind of like looking at Cunningham, who's kind of like a Danny Garcia here. Right? The two guys are close. Cunningham bends. The punch is out the screen. Right? You're looking at Cunningham's face. He's looking this way. The punch is on the way. I don't believe that's Wilder's style. Worse yet, I get the feeling that Fury, fighting from the same range, coming inside, right, fighting at the same range at which he fights Cunningham, would beat Wilder. Because he would be too close to Wilder. Right? For Wilder to have full power in that right hand. Wilder's right hand's what they call a long right hand. It's not a short right hand. Wilder's upper body is such that 
he's not bending this way and all out of shape and stuff like that. No, his right hand is straight. Look at the Audley Harrison KO, right? It's a straight punch. Just think about Vladimir Klitschko for a second. Vladimir Klitschko, like Wilder, throws a straight right hand, right? His punch is also lethal. But you knew when you were watching a Vladimir Klitschko fight that Klitschko's body was a little bit stiff. You knew you weren't going to see Klitschko bent at the waist, leaning this way, coming over the top with the right hand. You knew that wasn't the setup. And understand what suckers, in my opinion, and we're just doing homework. This is a bar, we're just sharing drinks, we're just, figuratively speaking, just talking to each other as we sit down and look at the fight. I'm not saying I'm right. Disagree with me, please, if you want to. But I believe what suckers fury is the setup to the punch. I don't believe fury is vulnerable to generic right hands. Right? You have to be a heavyweight who bends, looks one way, throws the punch while you're looking another way, has your body leaning. You have to be a Joe Fraser type of heavyweight, in my opinion, to be able to land the kind of looping shot. You know, it's, it's a... <laughs> It's not a hook, it's a straight punch, but it's thrown oddly. You'll notice the angle. It, it comes down like this, right? Marcus Maidana would have been proud of the punch that drops Fury in the second round, right? It's a, we'll say, straight right hand. It's a different type of straight right hand than the kind I'm expecting to see from Wilder right when they fight let me also say this too when fury decides to smother cunningham it takes fury a few rounds to realize that steve cunningham's not a heavyweight when fury decides to smother cunningham i just want you to see how effortlessly he walks inside in other words he just has his hands up and he comes forward right this is a skilled inside fighter Many people view the knockout in this fight as a dirty knockout, right? I'll say this. I'll agree. Fury has a forearm, has a forearm on Cunningham. Then, of course, he drops the forearm and with the other hand knocks him out. Folks, I'm just telling you, that's inside fighting. That's the kind of stuff that Roberto Duran used to do. Julio Cesar Chavez used to do. Right? That's what the guys, Bernard Hopkins, that's what the guys who can fight inside know, know to do. Now, I'll just say, that's a skill set here. In this fight, Fury Wilder, that only one of the fighters has. Right, so understand, in this Cunningham film, Fury's getting inside against a guy who is harder to deal with inside than Deontay Wilder will be. And it's as Fury's getting inside, and just look at the angle of the knockdown punch in the second round. <laughs> it's as he's getting inside on a flexible great athlete who doesn't fight straight up and down, who's more flexible than a Wilder, than a Vladimir Klitschko. It's as Fury's coming inside that he gets hit with a shot that Cunningham throws from an angle that I don't think Fury's going to see in the Wilder fight. Now, I will say this, though. Right? Wilder's supporters, understand he's the favorite in the fight, make a valid point when they say, look, is it about angles or is it about the guy's chin? We're going to have 36 minutes 
assuming Fury isn't able to stop Wilder. We're going to have 36 minutes. Three minute rounds, 12 rounds. To land at least one hellacious right hand on Tyson Fury's chin. Given that Fury looked hurt on the canvas here, how do you know that he'll be able to take the punch? Also, isn't Wilder the kind of guy, as we learned from the Luis Ortiz fight, fight that went a few rounds, but isn't Wilder the kind of guy who, even in a fight that goes a few rounds, still has power in the eighth, ninth rounds? Right? So even Steve Cunningham, who was flattered to hear that Fury had said, this is the toughest fight of my career. Even Steve Cunningham had to say, well, Wilder's going to land at least one right hand during their fight. Right? My point in this video is simply that it's not going to be the kind of right hands, plural, that Steve Cunningham landed. Right? Cunningham's angles are different. Cunningham's a much shorter fighter than Tyson Fury, and he's fighting small, right? He's throwing the punch from low angles. I'll agree, Fury has a problem with that. Fury against Joe Frazier would be an interesting fight, right? That'd be an interesting fight. Fury against his namesake, Iron Mike Tyson, would be an interesting fight, right? These are guys who could get low, right? These are guys who come in, they're bobbing and weaving low. Right? You could see where if Fury didn't see the right hand against Cunningham, maybe he doesn't see the quick, short, hard punches that a Mike Tyson throws. Right, I'll agree with that. But he's not fighting Joe Frazier or Mike Tyson here. He's fighting a tall guy who's very similar, very similar to Vladimir Klitschko. Right, The Vladimir Klitschko fight wasn't close, folks. Understand. Fury wins. They go into the fight in Klitschko's backyard, right? Klitschko's fighting out of Germany. They, they go into Klitschko's backyard. Klitschko's the champ, right? Understand, Fury, if Fury had gone into that fight as the champ, given how impressionable judges are in boxing, he would have won that fight by a wider margin, right? I'm not expecting... Deontay Wilder to try to collapse the pocket. That's not who he is. I'm not expecting Deontay Wilder to try to fight low. That's not who he is. So, as interesting as this Steve Cunningham film is, to me, it doesn't tell me that Tyson Fury is vulnerable to the kinds of right hands that Deontay Wilder throws. Right? Keep in mind, this fight is from 2013. It's, it's from well before. His fight against Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko didn't come close to hurting him. How many overhand right hands did Vladimir Klitschko land against Tyson Fury? Let me say this too. Deontay Wilder gave an interview where we said, hey, you know, I might talk with Vladimir Klitschko. The guys are friends. Vladimir Klitschko seems to be Every guy's friend, right? Keep in mind, Klitschko is the savvy poker player who saw the young lions on the edge of the jungle about to take his throne. And then, of course, Klitschko did the smart thing. He started training with them. <laughs> right? so, he, so he spars with Deontay Wilder. He spars with Anthony Joshua, right? Some of these young guys might have thought that this old champion was doing them a favor. I'm guessing after the sparring sessions, Klitschko went to his corner and had notes. Said, hey, if I ever fight Joshua, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, if I fight Wilder, here's what I'm going to do. Here's the problem, though. You go to Vladimir Klitschko after that Fury fight, and you say, hey, give me tips on how to beat Fury. Does Vladimir Klitschko have any tips to give? Folks, he knew his title hung in the balance going into the 11th round. 
right? That 11th and 12th round, did it look like he had cracked the code? Did it look like he had any insight into how to stop Tyson Fury? Right? Uh, I'm not sure if he did. <laughs> right? I'm not, you know, Vladimir Klitschko could tell you a lot of things. I'm not sure if he could tell you how to beat Tyson Fury. I don't think this Cunningham film, as tough as a fight as it was for Tyson Fury, the toughest of his career in his opinion, um, is a blueprint that Deontay Wilder can use. I'll be surprised if Deontay Wilder comes out and suddenly is bending at the waist and is fighting low. That's just not his game. That would surprise me the same way it would surprise me if I see Vladimir Klitschko in the ring and suddenly he's low down and he's, you know, throwing punches like this and stuff like that, looking like Ken Norton. I just don't see it happening. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Again, the video is in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Give it a look and then let us know what you think in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.